Thank you for listening and welcome to the Life Podcast, a proud member of the Eventide Entertainment Podcast Network. I'm your host, Don Smith. Travis Charles sticks around and Ed John is in to tell us about hashtag kneecaps. Dan Dean calls in from an army base in Kuwait with an update on I Wish I Was Laughing. And I get to be the only person on the show with only one first name. If you enjoy the show, like and follow The Life 1069 on Facebook and Don Smith Comedy on Twitter. Or tune in live on Wednesdays from noon to 2 p.m. on WWSU 106.9 FM. Or you can stream the show live at WWSU1069.org. The brutal presence overwhelms me. The brutal presence overwhelms me. All right, uh, we are we are back on the Life Radio Show. I'm your host Don Smith. That's the first time I've gotten that right since I've uh, started this show today. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm still still sitting in here with uh, Travis Charles. You thought I was going to say it? To me. <laughs> uh, we've been we, we've been dis- what what were we discussing? Oh, uh, the the uh, lottery. Oh the, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Cash, cash explosion. Cash explosion. Yeah. I, uh, um, yeah, I, I wish you luck on that. I yeah. really hope you get on. I'm, I'm, be, a, uh, I'm excited. I mean, here's the thing, getting the, getting the scratch ticket and then getting the entry card, I guess is one step. Right. So I got that. I registered my ticket yesterday and then I have to watch the live show on the 24th to see if they draw my name, but they pick 10 people per episode. So I've got a good shot. Yeah. You know, yeah. like. I'm going by like the track history of my life and how like things happen for me. It's like, I'm pretty confident I should get on the show. <laughs> like, cause that's just kind of like how my stuff goes. Well, it must be, must be nice. Yeah. And uh, unless it's marriages, then they don't go. Well, yeah, but, um, I don't think those ever work out for anybody, <laughs> but <Except> uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> So yeah, like so I mean like I'm I'm excited because I've always had this like in the back of my mind like you're supposed to win a bunch of money one day. You're supposed to like hit the lottery. <laughs> I've had that too. And like one damn thing. And I've dr- like and like I, I had the dreams about doing stand up before I did stand up like I was, I'm supposed to do stand up. I'm supposed to do stand up. And now I do it. So I feel like hopefully this show is like a first like a little like taste of, you know, winning some money or something. Yeah. Cuz literally yeah. there's an unlimited amount of money you can win. Because if you you can go on week after week, because you can win fifty grand if you go to the final round and win the fifty grand plus whatever you already won that day. So plus you can get you go it, back on the next, then you go back yeah. the next week, and someone has to challenge like not challenge, but they have to just be luckier than you. And if your name gets drawn again that week, you win another fifty thousand dollars. Then you go next week. So basically, if you just are super lucky, you can win fifty thousand dollars a week until the show ends. If yeah, you're that, just that there, lucky, there you go. Maybe that's going to be your new career, <laughs> dude. Like, like, what do you? I, I go go buy a house. How much did you make? Uh, fifty grand a week. Yeah. Can you prove that? Yeah, sure can. Like, <laughs> just watch the show. Hey, there's Ed. <laughs> Let me oh, get the door. Let me get, talk yeah. amongst yourself. It's just me here. Uh, we we we've got the uh, unamazingly Ed John coming into the studio. He came in here to. Hopefully, he didn't hear me talking all the crap about him earlier. <laughs> Oh, we're on the air, so don't say anything too bad. Yep. <laughs> yep. Well, let, let me let me turn your mic on for you, so you can join right in. Ed, John, welcome to the show. Are you going to be listening yeah. to your headphones the whole time you're talking? Yeah. Or is, it, is that your con, is that your uh, Kanye move? Yeah, he's just other than sun. He needs some dark glasses where he can just sit there and just like throw one word out every now and then while we're having a conversation. I'm going to count how many us you do on this radio show. <laughs> uh, Put the mic right. to your mouth. <laughs> How, how are you doing? No, you What's gotta put, you gotta put close. Yeah, you gotta you gotta be right there. You're used to it's the world like get friends in your it's face. It's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Treat it like a date. Treat that microphone like a date. <laughs> so what made what, what made you want to come in here today? <laughs> I saw Travis Charles' name and I was like, I'm going. Okay, oh, okay. Because okay. well, we were talking about you guys and your rivalry earlier. I wouldn't call it. A, would you call it a rivalry? Well, I mean, it's it's hard when you're, one, yeah, you're going to have to get much closer to that. I'll yeah. call it a uh, mutual. Yeah. Travis, teach him how to use You can see <laughs> with microphones, the closer to your mouth you get. Yep. I'm just so you can sit back, but bring the mic, bring the boom to your mouth. That's how that works. Yeah, yeah. Go, baby. So you've never you've never been on a radio station. Uh, I actually have. Yeah, he, yeah. He's, well, he's been in here a couple times. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. But, well, so no. I've been in here. <laughs> he's been here I've a been couple on a radio times, station. So, yeah. <laughs> um, 
All no. right, Ed, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, no, it's hard to call it a rivalry. A rivalry when um, I'm a comic and you 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 just talk on a microphone. That was beautiful. <laughs> that was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. That He's was been beautiful. working on that. He's that been beautiful. hoping you would show up just so he could do that. That was, beautiful. That was horrible. <laughs> I saw him over there writing. Like I've been in here twenty like minutes ago. No, because like, I, I told him as every show I do or podcast, for some reason your stupid name comes up, <laughs> and like. <laughs> So like we've talked about you on our podcast yeah. already, yeah. I gotta check out y'all's podcast. Yeah, you you're getting all kinds of name drops for. Yeah, I gotta check out the podcast. It's all negative. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> great. Great. Oh. Did you uh, talk about? Did you talk about your set on Sunday? We did a little bit. Well, a little, little, little bit, a little bit. We, we were we've been mainly covering uh, Civil War reenactments or LARPing. Civil War LARPing, and uh, we we've been we're going to start uh, reenacting World War Two. Yeah. <laughs> when is this? Right now? No. No, not right now. You're okay. Yeah. That Civil War thing. It's February. <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> well, no, never mind. <laughs> um, oh, go ahead. Go no, ahead. I'm good. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure I get my stuff straight in my head. Um, no, we were just talking about me getting possibly being on that uh, lottery TV show, Twin Money. Yeah, did you, did you see the, the Cash uh, Explosion? The TV oh, show. Is that, is that still what it's called? It's called uh, Cash Explosion. Okay. Are okay. you doing that? So I, I got the scratch ticket. I won the entry. Okay. So now, n- now I've got to get picked to be on the show. Okay. Which I'm pretty confident. Hopefully it happens. Yeah. Because they pick ten people per show. It looks like, yeah. and, and everybody walks away career. with a minimum of like six grand. Oh, dope. So if I get on the show, yep. I get at least I'm going to make at least six thousand, but I can make pretty much unlimited money. Because they have uh, they have comedy classes in New, in New York for like two thousand bucks. You can take those classes like There you go. You can well, stop see, if you him know up. that, that you means you're searching comedy up, classes. <laughs> like, you're looking up ways to be funny. Like, I don't, I don't need that. I just use the audience and I judge their laughter. You were good Sunday, though. I'm always good. You were good Sunday. <laughs> I will hand you those props. You were good Sunday. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're welcome, sir. You were not. Everybody did um, on Sunday. I was hilarious Sunday. I wouldn't put the word hilarious. That's a very distinctive word. <laughs> I was hilarious. No, never say hilarious. Do you know what the definition of hilarious is? I was hilarious. You're laughing to the point of insanity. I was hilarious. Oh, my God. That happened. And delusional. Um, You were very good. You were very good. It's okay. He's whispering, so the mic's not picking any of that up. So uh, none of it's on record. It's like... (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. So 6,000 bucks. You you can win. Walk away. That's the minimum. Okay. But if you win the if you win that show, you win fifty thousand up to fifty thousand plus. Oh. So like, there's well, a chance that I could like quit my job. Yeah. In yeah, the next yeah. month and a half, if if things go favorably in my direction. Good luck. Good luck, man. Yeah, that's going to be his new job as game show contestant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, look, I, I've, I've tried out for America's Got Talent. I've, I've auditioned for them. I've auditioned for um, the Weakest Link. Um, I've auditioned for uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Like I've done a lot of this. We got stuff. a call. Let's see if this is. Let's see if the phones are working. They have phones in the Middle East. Yeah, we have. They have phones out there in the Middle East. Uh, WWSU, you're on the air. And this is somebody calling from one of those phones in the Middle East. What's going on? <laughs> What's happening, Dan Dean? Thanks for calling in from from parts unknown. Well, it's not really unknown. It's not I, unknown. I'm in Kuwait right now. Oh, okay, okay. Gotcha. Well, now, now we know you're giving away positions. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not Geraldo super top that, secret at this fired. point. I yeah, was trying to keep it secret for a while when I first got here, and then I started looking at my unit's website on Facebook, and our public affairs office was putting out our location. So I figured, all right, it must so be cool <laughs> if I can do it. Is he in Kuwait right now? He's literally yeah, in Kuwait. That's right, right now. Kuwait. Where at? Yeah, I guarantee Kuwait. you right now I am going to be the best guest that's ever been on this show from Kuwait. <laughs> that is that is probably true. I'm gonna, it's going to be hard to find a better one. Where's a waste from? Huh? I'm not going to lie. Where's a waste yeah, from? Yeah, but he wasn't. I'm not sure. If, well, he's he's somewhere in the Middle East, but nobody really. I mean, he's American. Right. The guy's in America. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, where you're from doesn't count where are you, you are now. You getting a lot matters. of sand in your skirt out there, Dan? <laughs> Well, it just falls right out pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, we we were having a discussion about Peterhead Scotland earlier. Yeah, <laughs> Peterhead Scotland. That, you know what? I bet you Dan knows where that's at. Yeah, I'm sure he does. Who, who's in the studio right now? I think Travis is in uh, there, Tra- right? Yeah. Travis Charles and Ed John are in here with me. What's up? 
I got gotcha. you. I, I don't have you know that personally, but oh, okay. uh, I've seen him on Facebook quite a bit. That, that's enough. That's yeah, where you can find me: uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah. You will find me there. <laughs> yeah, but what, what are your okay. handles, Ed? Since I've got tons of handles. Oh, okay. Walking through the hashtag des- hilarious. <laughs> hashtag love kneecaps. handles though. Hashtag we have love handles. I think everybody in the studio has this. Dan, right you'll now, have Dan. more fun walking through the desert avoiding IEDs than you will watching Ed do comedy. <laughs> One of those, huh? So, so <laughs> One of those? Be. Hold the hell on. One of those? <laughs> I know what those are. <laughs> yes. So so what's going on over there, Dan? You, are you uh, getting a lot of shows? Well, I there's not a lot going on this way as far as comedy. The only comedy really? that happens around here are the shows that I put on myself. I do a bi-weekly open mic over here. And it, it, to be honest, hell, it goes just as well as any of the shows we do back there, usually. So is there a lot of bombing in Kuwait, then? <laughs> yeah, you want to be careful <laughs> saying somebody bombed in Kuwait. <laughs> I, I knew well, one way or the other when I came here I was going to bomb. Man. Yeah. So <laughs> that's how I'm making sure that happened. Well, yeah, that's the safe way. That's right. the right. safe way to bomb right. is on stage. I just imagine right now Dan isn't on one of those little like field phones that you gotta like keep cranking it to make it work. Yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> he's paid some little to crank satellite it for. phone. <laughs> if, if you can see me right now, I'm sitting behind this like solid wood desk. There are three computer screens in front of me. I'm sitting here with my feet propped up on my desk. No shoes on. It's not even my desk. It's actually my boss's desk. But <laughs> war, war, is, war, war is war is hell, that. Dan. War is hell. When do you come Tax. back? I'll be back mid March. Okay, oh, we're okay. looking. So, we're it's not exact right now, so we don't know for sure. There are some things that could push us to the right or the left, either way. So sometime mid March, I'm hoping to be sitting at home in my own kilt, drinking uh, <laughs> green beer. Gotcha. St. Patty's Day. Yeah. There you go. That cool would be deal. Good. To be back in your kilt, I guess. <laughs> Do they let you wear your kilt over there at all? I have one of them here with me. The only time I ever wear it's when I'm doing one of the open mics. Oh, okay. So you still you still yeah. wear your kilt on he wear, stage? He wears like a military kilt. That's a, well, I do when I'm at home. It's well, not here, good. I don't wear that particular <laughs> like camouflage they, kilt or one of those camouflage kilts. Yep, Ed just said one of those. So, <laughs> one of those. Yeah, it's it's kind of one of those things where everybody is in uniform all the time they're so used to camouflage you don't wear that uniform when you're not in that uniform you know you don't you don't wear that and show off that you're in the army to other people who are in the army they don't give a shit yeah <laughs> i was in the air force i get it that's right. why that's why he's always wearing his flight jacket yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yep, just showing it off. Well, see, Dan wears a kilt so he can walk around and hide Wendy from people. Like when I'm home, right? Yeah, when he's home. Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> Wendy Ferguson. I, I tried to do that on the way over here, but they <laughs> caught us going through customs. And yeah, sent her back home. So you got, you kind of got to be careful wearing your kilt when it's windy. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're in Peter, absolutely, <laughs> and, and it gets pretty windy here, and you get some you get some crazy looks going around. Yeah, I would imagine when your guilt blows up. This is my <laughs> rifle. This is my wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yep, this is my draft. <laughs> <laughs> that is not your gun, know, sir. That kill. is not your gun. <laughs> so how are the well, the open uh, mics are going good out there? Are you working on some? Are you going to come back with some good material this time? <laughs> well, I don't know if it's good or not. I have some new material. Oh, okay. okay. I, I guarantee that for sure. But yeah, I've I've come up with some good stuff while we're out here. I think I I enjoy it, and I'm having a good time trying to put some of my new stuff and old stuff together. But the the open mics are great out here. We I've gotten two guys that are out here in my unit who have kind of picked up comedy. They came to a couple of the shows, and they kind of liked what they saw. Said they wanted to try it. So they come out every time now to the open mics, and I think they're going to keep doing it when they get back home. And there's a third guy who tried it a couple of times, and he hadn't really been back since, but he insists he's going to come out one more time here before we leave, and maybe he'll get on stage a couple of times when we get home too. So it's been going very well. And we make it a a multi-purpose open mic kind of a variety show just because there aren't a whole lot of stand-up comedians around here so we let guys come out and do music poetry whatever 
And typically, we just end up with a whole bunch of comedy on the show, but that's how it goes. It always goes real well. We'll have uh, I'll have thirty, forty people there. I've had up to like sixty five one time, and they're they're always fun shows. I think it's funny. Even in Kuwait, Dan had people watch him and go, "Man, I could do that." <laughs> right <laughs> now, is it a bringer show? Because you know, if I'm ever over that way, I, might... <laughs> I got twelve people ready to go. Yeah, if if you're here, you know, just let me know and and we'll try to get you on the lineup. You, maybe you can get a guest spot or something for. Hey, cool. I need at least yeah. fifteen minutes. That's a long flight. I need at least yeah. fifteen minutes. Yeah, you need at least fifteen. Minutes well, yeah, of you do need fifteen minutes. <laughs> I need at least fifteen minutes. Yeah, yep. if Ed, if Ed makes it, you're gonna he's gonna at least have to feature. No, the cool thing though about doing shows like that when you're deployed overseas is that like there's so much like pressure in the outside world going on. So when you get on the stage, people are actually funny because you, know, you don't cry. You know, if you don't laugh, you cry. Yeah. So is that, is that the that wind or is really somebody, something blowing up? No, no, some somebody was using the paper shredder. Oh, okay, okay. I, I was worried for you for a second. <laughs> I think we just yeah, lost. They Dan. were shredding. <laughs> they were shredding Dan's discharge papers. Yeah. Yeah, if you think yeah, you're I'm going, her kaboom is static. Yeah, they're going to keep you there just to run the open mic. Although, if we heard a huge explosion of him scream and going off the phone. We'd be like, uh, yeah. what? Yeah, well, that took yeah. a wrong turn. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> no, back, back to the lottery. Yeah. Uh, Getting messages on my Facebook blowing up. You all right? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> all six people listening to the show be real nervous about me. Yeah, that's You said the true, seven people true. listening to it? Is that six, what you said? Six. six, six. six. Okay, six. Yeah, don't give me that much credit. <laughs> what kind of music are you playing today? Who, me? Yeah. The same as always. Potter's Field. Oh. Deal with it, Ed. Yeah. It's the only music he's <laughs> ever played the entire time he's been on the show. No, every, every now and then I got some other stuff. I got some new stuff I need to start integrating in. I just haven't gone through it yet. Any other oh, Potter's Field has a new more? album, huh? Potter's Field 2. Right, yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> the second coming of yeah. Potter's Field. He's, he's back. <laughs> Harry <laughs> Potter's <laughs> Field. Harry Potter's Field. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what 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 was I about to say? Yeah, we we were talking earlier about you know if 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 you ended up blowing up, you'd come back you know, and Gar- <laughs> Gary Henry would have to carry you and Wendy on stage. Oh <laughs> Jesus Christ, that would be that would be rough. Wendy is uh, on Dan. her own, and then with with me in there. <laughs> Gary's yeah. holding Dan and Dan's holding Wendy. Yeah. It's like a it's a weird like uh Russian yeah. nesting doll. So the three headed like. comic. <laughs> they could all do a tour together. Three headed comedy <laughs> Open and middle and head Johnny head Knox later, just attached. And men in black with the little head growing out, the second head growing out yeah. of his, yeah. his shoulder. Or like was it total recall, the quado? Yeah, Carter, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, Gary to open his shirt and got Dan strapped <laughs> no, on there. No, Wendy's duct taped to his belly. I got my two people. <laughs> I got two people. <laughs> oh, that's terrible to think about. It's kind of funny. <laughs> oh my god, that's really good. Yep, triple threat. Oh yeah. So, are you excited to come back home and start getting into some comedy around here again? I kind of am. I'm, I'm about ready to do that. I'm going to come home first thing and spend some time with my kids. We're going to do a little traveling or whatever. But then when I when we get into April, I think I'm going to really start hitting that comedy scene a little bit more. You know, get back into the swing of things, show my face around there, and, and try to start getting back on some shows. There you go. Yeah, because I, I wish I was laughing still has some shows going on that, in the area, doesn't it, that you're having other people run for you or? Yeah, Joe Young's been running my shows for me while I've been gone, and I've cut way back since I've been gone, but there are a few venues that still want to have some comedy. You know, they they do it periodically, and they still want to do that, so Joe's been running those shows for me probably about one a month or whatever. He's been doing a great job for me. I appreciate that. Well, there's a, there's a good chance when you come back, Dan, that you'll still see the same people doing the same joke, so... <laughs> Ouch. Well, I had absolutely no doubt about that. No. <laughs> Hashtag kneecaps. <laughs> Hashtag kneecaps. He has no idea what you're talking about, yeah, but yeah. I guarantee needs to you, know it's a thing. I guarantee yeah. when he comes back, he'll think that joke's stupid just he like me. He still needs to know it's a thing. <laughs> he probably yeah. thinks it's stupid now, and he hasn't even heard it. So. Hashtag That's... kneecaps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's already like, this dude, Ed's an idiot. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how's the podcast going? 
Man, you know what? I I kind of slacked off some on it since I've been here. You know, the the first hundred episodes, I hit that religiously every single Wednesday for a hundred weeks. I did that, and then I got over here and I got busy doing some things. And you know, I don't have my co-host over here with me anymore. So you know, it started to be a case where I'd go two weeks without doing one and. Then I'm here three weeks, and then I went a month, and I'm trying to get back into the swing of things now. I, I never completely fell off the map with it, but I, I had a lot of people all the time messaging me like, man, what's going on with the podcast? Where's your next podcast? And I'll be like, I'll get to it. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> I'm in a war right now. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> what's going on outside? Yeah, it, it gets, yeah uh... I mean, I... I put one out about a week ago or so. It was my last episode, and I, I think they're pretty good. I think I'm doing a decent job of keeping them entertaining, you, you know, even if I'm here by myself, talking to myself for a half hour. But just kind of give people an update of what's going on, you know, if you guys are interested in what happens. Well, Dan, I want you to know that I have never to listened basis. to an episode of your podcast. Never? Never. What's never? That? I've never listened to your podcast, so you're welcome. What? So you haven't missed it. See, since I don't know what's happening right now. It's not like I've <laughs> ever promoted it before. <laughs> yeah. Static. Yeah. So I get, well, I didn't even know anybody knew you had one. I've always meant to listen just, to it when he was doing it. And like, I would go, I'm going to listen to that. And then I just didn't. Would, yeah, wouldn't do it. Like I'd go do something else or like, so I don't have a lot of free time. But you listen to my show. I've never listened but to this I, one. That's, not even this one. Like no. you, Not even the one you're on. You just on. started a podcast too, didn't you, Travis? <laughs> yeah, me, John Morris, and uh, Joe Robinette. Yep, we look forward to not listening. To That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> what, what's that? What do you guys talk about? What is, what's that about? It's basically, I mean, it, I mean, it's slightly stand up based because that's what we all do. But uh, it goes on a lot of tangents. Um, so we like we'll start talking about one thing and then wind up talking about action figures and then wind up talking about. Um, this celebrity or whatever, but like, I'm, this is an outlet for me to tell all my stories for the last. I'm, I'm touched that you modeled it after my show. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, a, it's basically no. a standard podcast. And yeah. You just tell I can, uh, yeah. stories about how you know Burt Kreischer. Yeah. <laughs> I do. He's a really cool guy. Yeah. No, but it's allowing me to get some stories out that I've never told because people do give me a lot of like flack for like, for Burt for some reason. And they act like I'm doing it for no reason. But like, I mean, I've known the dude for 12 years. So, you know, we've we've done a lot of stuff in the past 12 years. So I've been on his TV show. You know, he called me when my kid was born. So, I mean, it's more than just I've worked with him. That's why, like, he's the one that I would go to. But there's so many more that I don't talk about. But now the podcast, I'm getting these stories out, like, one at a time. Yeah, I got you. I hear you. I worked with Eddie Murphy. You, back you, in the you guys have only got a couple episodes out you right now, right? Yeah, we're Eddie doing Murphy the third episode today. We got Ray Jackson coming in, supposed to be if he's on time to be. Um, what is that? A guest. <laughs> what is that? Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> if you're recording at six, yeah, I hope you told him to be there at four. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so true. Uh, I'm well, I th- sorry, I think, man. Always, I think Ray's always been on time when he's done my show. Yeah, we've messaged him. He's read it. He didn't reply though, so I got a feeling he's going to cancel. He has never been on time to any show he's done for me. Yeah, <laughs> that's 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 a uh, classic, Ray. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> so I I feel lucky that he's been on time for my shows. Yeah, yeah. I was working with Eddie Murphy back in the early nineties. Man, and be I mean, quiet. Kneecaps joke by him. He was like, "You got something." You know Run what? With it. Stop. Run with yeah. it. And Stop. then he called when your kids were born. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. Yeah, that's, well, that's good. It's, it's good to have stories like that to name drop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and it's also good for you to have stories ed where people think your kneecaps jokes funny cause, yeah hashtag kneecaps hashtag, he got sorry, so hashtag, excited that michael hashtag. shea liked his joke <laughs> brilliant <laughs> yes is yes. what he said brilliant well you know everyone's level of brilliant is different no it's not i'm pretty sure einstein wouldn't think that joke was brilliant because of what he did yes he would <laughs> nah Einstein like, doesn't it, really get doesn't knees get equal much, MC so. squared. He, he might, he might. He came up with a big bomb. Actually, there's a there's a pretty famous black and white photo still of our Charlie Chaplin and Einstein talking at a world premiere of one of his movies, and they had a dialogue. And Einstein was just talking about it's amazing how you can not say a word but make people laugh, and people mm-hmm. remember it, you know. And then Charlie Chaplin was like, "Well, it's, it's amazing how you can just speak." on like abstract ideas and make the world listen so it's a pretty cool photo 
And hashtag yeah. kneecaps. Hashtag, hashtag yeah, kneecaps. Charlie Chaplin I think said it's hashtag. amazing he's such a genius, but he couldn't comb his hair. <laughs> <laughs> Who, Chaplin or uh, Einstein? Einstein. Einstein. That's funny. Yeah. Well, that's. Uh, I guess that was one of the things he didn't. He had too much on his mind to worry about. Comb- well, no. Yeah, someone they, there's a disease to where no matter what you do to your hair, your hair stands up, and they think he may have had it. It's usually stark white hair, and it stands straight up, and no matter what you try to do to tame it. It always stands up. So they so think he may have had like it. Kind of like Don King. A little bit, but yeah. Don King combs his up. Yeah, Don, yeah, King, Don King and his white hair. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I saw something. There's a, there's a group of kids I saw in this special where all their hair is straight up in the air, and it's just white and blonde. No matter what their parents do, like gel, mousse, hairspray. You it, sure you weren't watching like anime or something? Maybe it was Young Einstein with Yahoo Serious. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> But no, <laughs> no, but like this, it, it's a thing. It's a, a genetic disorder where your hair literally just comes out, and no matter what length it gets, it'll just stand straight up from your head, and it'll eventually get heavy enough, and then like fold over. But I remember watching it; it was like they think Einstein had that same whatever My it was. Pubic hairs do the same thing. <laughs> What'd you say? My pubic hairs do the same thing. That's they're long and white. My, I didn't think my Valentine's Day would be complete until I learned about your pubic hairs, Ed. You're welcome. <laughs> I thought they'd be really tight knit and just mat it down like a like a Berber carpet. I told you, 18 inches. We had this discussion Sunday. You know what? Inches. That's just that's This is just, a church radio show. That's just the hair. hair. That's the hair. My hair. Right. Hair, 18 inches. <laughs> yep, you got a heck of an afro down there, son. Right now, Dan, <laughs> right now, Dan scratches his kneecap, and he's hitting uh, yep. Peterhead, Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We did a story yeah, about Peterhead. Yeah, I've been Peter, doing yeah, that. Who is Peterhead, Scotland? It, it it was there a, was, yeah, there was a town in Scotland. We did a news story, and it was based out of Peterhead, Scotland, where there was a... Uh, a uh, uh, police standoff, a 45-minute police standoff with a uh, stuffed tiger. Because they thought it was real. Oh, I yeah. saw that. Did you? I saw, I saw that, that, your stupid news, story, that story the other day, too. I didn't know that's where it was. Yep, yeah, that was, <laughs> that's, <laughs> a, that's the main reason I put it in my list to talk about was because it was from Peter, Peterhead, Scotland. Don't and we determined it. it got the name of the town because their their kilts are shorter than the rest of them. <laughs> yeah. Mini kilts. Yeah. <laughs> My high school marching band wore kilts. Full kilts. What, what, what was their school? mascot? The Peter Hicks? Fighting Scots. No, the Fighting Scots. Oh, okay. North Carolina. That makes sense. If it was the yeah. Fighting Irish, it wouldn't, but. Right. Fighting yeah. Scots. Fighting. <laughs> yeah. I prefer drinking scotch, actually. Well, we drink too. Oh, well. There you During go. band practice? I wasn't on the band. Oh, you were in chorus. Like these hot jokes. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Are, are yeah. you working on material now? Always. Is it? Always. You should be. One day one will come out good. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know what? I can't wait for Dan to come back because Dan's going to fuck with you too. <laughs> Man. He's going to what? Let, Hold on a second. Wait, that's oh, not allowed sorry, on the I just radio. Had, well, I just had, I FCC just on, had to, yeah, I just had to silence him real quick. <laughs> I FCC did. I'm my bad. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, how, do you yeah. have enough listeners now that the FCC pays attention to your show? Because I know I've dropped an F bomb before. Well, ju- just in case, just in case, we might. I don't know. I don't know if we. I don't know what we have anymore. But, you know. <laughs> and when I didn't, you didn't even bother. You didn't even think about pressing that button. I probably didn't know there was a button at the time. <laughs> I learn as I go here. <laughs> I do want to cover a news story real quick while I got you on the phone, Dan. Then we'll let you go if you got uh, you got army duty to do. But uh, yeah, something like that. Something like <laughs> that. <laughs> or you can stick around. I'm going to hit a news story, and then we might play a song and come back and end the show out. Uh, United Airlines employees at Newark Li- Newark Liberty Air International Airport in New Jersey recently told a passenger that her emotional support peacock wouldn't be able to accompany on her flight. May sound bizarre to bring a peacock on a plane, but give give the woman credit for persistence. She reportedly tried several times to get the bird on board, even offered to buy a separate plane ticket for it. But airline employees uh, nixed every request, according to the travel blog, live and let fly. The passenger's identity was not released. A uh, quote from the, uh, the United statement, uh, the animal did not meet guidelines for a number of reasons, including its weight and size. We explained this to the customer's to the customers on three separate occasions before they arrived at the airport. United told Business Insider that passengers need to provide documentation for from a medical professional at least 48 hours advance notice uh, before bringing an emotional support animal on a flight. I've right, never so heard 
of an emotional support Don, peacock. Why? I think I've this, talked this about story, this. This story is all well and good, but I'm going to go ahead and put an end to this peacock shenanigans right now because <laughs> let me tell you about what happened shortly after that at Spirit Airlines. A woman brought her emotional support hamster onto Spirit <laughs> Airlines, right? And when she got there, they told her it would be okay. And as she was going through customs, they said, no, it would not be okay. You cannot bring that. You have two choices. You can take your hamster outside and let it go, or you can flush the hamster down the toilet, which she chose to do. So she stood there in the bathroom in line for customs, crying, and flushed her hamster down the toilet. That is the opposite of emotional support. (laughs) Yes, that is. <laughs> yes, it is absolutely, it is absolutely opposite. This wow. happened at the Baltimore Washington International Airport. Her pebble, her her hamster was named Pebbles. Well, that, that, yeah, that's an emotional trauma hamster, right? <laughs> yeah, emotional trauma hamster. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't you just go outside and let it go? That's what I'm. At least it has a chance if you let it go right. outside. You flush it down the toilet, that hamster's dead. Yeah. Well, like, like, I don't know. That's like, who was the guy who gave her the two options? Like, you can either murder your pet or uh, set it free. Well, so the, I, the airline, the, the, air, the Spirit Airlines denies that anyone told her she should flush the hamster. But it's been all over the news every time I open up my, my news feed here. There's going to be some story 10 years from now where this giant sewer hamster comes yeah. out and attacks yeah, people. You, you Google it, hamsters a lot. It gets don't raised you? by rats. And then it becomes a <laughs> made for TV movie on Lifetime. Yeah, but I guess it is hard, a lot harder to flush a peacock down the toilet. Yeah. This could be this could be the newest coming of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh oh. Oh, man. Well, these are the go. hamsters that drive the. Um, yep, Splinter. splinter. <laughs> no, the hamsters that drive be. the. Uh, what are they? That the the, the could be where it came from. Remember the hamster commercial? They're all in like jump. They're all in jumpsuits, yeah. Yeah. and they drive the cars. Yeah, before uh, long, the they'll Kia. be driving Kia. Kia, yeah. <laughs> Kia hamster. Yeah, Kia. Yeah. It all it all started in the Boston airport, Baltimore. 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 Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the same difference. It's the same place, just different place. Was, that's funny. Not funny, but funny. <laughs> it's, no, it's not funny. It's a poor hamster. Maybe he survived. Maybe he caught a ride. I don't think so. It no, depends on how fast so. he gets into the larger pipe. Yeah, because there's a little, you know. It's like a I water guess. slide. I guess. I haven't really been. It's like a slide. I haven't really spent a yeah, lot of time. Like King's Island. Lines. He just went down a tube. Woo! Yeah. And splash at the bottom. And now he's hanging out. Like, he's just living in the sewers now. If he hit that sewer, though, he's got AIDS now. Yeah. Why? Well, so I, Hold on. But, <laughs> why? I don't know. I don't think hamsters don't, can get him. I don't think you get AIDS from sewers. I think you can with the needles that are flushed down the uh, sewers. I think you can. You flush a lot of needles? I mean, it happens. Like, yeah, what yeah. That's where people, what that's do people you think needles. happens in sewers? That's how people dump needles. They get rid well, of needles. Well, what do you think happens in sewers? Because I really don't know what happens. Huh? There's it's enough flushes. water pressure that goes through there at one certain point that flushes whatever's in the main pipes out. That's why it goes to the spill wells and clogs up their systems. And they have to shut down to clean them out. Like, there's not like a plethora of AIDS needles in the bottom of a sewer just chilling out waiting for you to go swimming. Prove it. Go down there with a... No, See, I'm just I'm just concerned about the emotional trauma of this hamster going through this tube, just hoping it's not aimed for Richard Gear. Oh boy, that was <laughs> wasn't that a gerbil? Yeah, that's <laughs> which which yeah. do you think would be worse? I I don't know, I don't know. I uh, I mean, either way, it winds up in a yeah, so it's the same dark dark same hole, crap, no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> so if I fly Spirit, they're gonna make me pit my emotional support white person. You, you have an Whoa. emotional support cracker? Is that what you <laughs> I did not say that. I said a white person. <laughs> <laughs> now, Every black guy has to have case. like five emotional support white people. On my first trip I'm taking when I get back, I'm going on Spirit Airlines, and I want to see him take one of those crackers and, and shove them in the toilet. I did say crackers. Give him a swirly. Because <laughs> Dan is uh, 1% black. Yeah. 2%. 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%. Yeah. Or like wreck. milk. <laughs> 2%. Right. That'd be crazy. <laughs> so I'm, I'm basically skim black. Skim black. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> be identified. Hashtag no. skim black. Yeah. Dan That's is a, uh, is a is a is a larping black guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> skim black. That's good. Uh, yeah, we had a lot of discussions uh, of larping earlier. So. Larping. What what is larping? 
Never heard of LARPing. I'm the master of it. I've been doing it my whole life. Yep, there you go. A LARPing is live action role playing. Okay. Yeah. So is that a real thing? Yes. That's, oh yeah, that's a real thing. We were talking about Mike Shea uh, two weekends and two weeks in <laughs> the month. Mike Shea uh, pretends to be a pirate. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like the guy yeah. on dodgeball. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So that so that's who thought your joke was brilliant. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Some filthy, First of all, it, it is brilliant. Some I, filthy I, pirate. I'm kidding, Mike. But you know, uh, Mike Shea runs Even Tide Entertainment, which broadcasts this uh, Oh, he, he resends so he's, it out. He's going to listen to every bit of this anyway. What up, Mike? <laughs> he's forced to listen to it. Yeah. yeah. We have one listener. Is yeah. that real? How, how, many, how many shows do they have on there? On Eventide, uh, I think right now he's got yeah. seven shows on there. He's got one show a week it, he puts out. Yeah, I was going to say he has to listen to all of them, but if it's just one a week, that's not too bad. Well, it's one per day oh, of the week. Yeah, I, sorry, I get what you're saying. Week, yeah. Seven weekly shows. Right, right. Well, he did. I think yeah. I think it might be six now. I think somebody slacked off and he fired him. <laughs> Dropped off. <laughs> yeah, it, it happens. Podcast coming. Uh, yeah. What time is it there, Dan? It's nine forty PM right now. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm eight hours ahead of you guys. Oh, it's almost your bedtime then. Yeah, this is Yeah, it's actually probably well past my bedtime, but that's all right. I don't like I said, our replacements are here. They're getting ready to take over in the next couple of days. I don't really have a lot coming up. Gotcha. On my schedule. Yeah, you're you're just on autopilot now. <laughs> yeah, you Pretty got, to, much. Re- I'm, got I'm the replacements trained. Teaching you my too, last yeah. class this week. I've got two more days, and after that, I'm I'm pretty much done. Good deal. There you go. All right. Well, we do have a couple more news stories. I'm not going to play a song, but we're going to probably end a little early, just because. Nobody likes music anyway. It's terrible. No, no, no. That's yeah, music. <laughs> uh, Barney the dinosaur famously sings "I love you, you love me." And the theme song of the PBS children's show, Barney and Friends. But the actor who played the purple character uh, from the early 90s and the early 2000s isn't loving, isn't loving the way he portrayed in his article uh, about his latest occupation. He is apparently a tantric massage therapist. Uh, David Joyner charges female clients <laughs> $350 for three to four hours of ritual bath, chakra balancing, and massage that can lead to, quote, mind-blowing orgasms. Uh, apparently the article, uh, was an anticlimax for Joyner. Uh, he complained on Facebook quote, I, I truly wish more people would try to see the spiritual side of Tantra and not think it's all about sex. Some people here in the West can be so sad. Does he have a new like song? I rub you, <laughs> you rub me. Is that the same guy? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Barney. Now, please, please, please tell me he wears that Barney outfit while he's doing <laughs> yes. that. He's got to. That's got <laughs> That's got to be the big part of it. That's, you know. We're going to have a good day. Hey, story kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, <Yeah. laughs> bend over, Look what sir. I can do with this tail. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. Where would you like this tail? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Where's my lotion? I'm not sure that's a Barney. Voice. Yeah, I don't know I, who that is. I don't know. It's, my, it's, a Barney, it's a Barney in my brain. You have the Barney in your brain. Because <laughs> we all have we all, yeah, we we all, all have, have our own personal Barney. He got in, in trouble for sex and harassing women, too. Did he? Yeah. Barney? I didn't know he, would he go did, out, too. He would go out and tell people, I'm Barney, the purple dinosaur, and, like, pick up women. Why and think he? he was supposed to be, like, you know, like Jude Law or something because he played Barney. Wow. Well, they ran out of people to sexually harass that were actual movie stars, so then they had to move into the yeah, right. Yeah. Everybody else is already. <laughs> yep. Everybody else has already had it. You know. I thought my Barney was pretty good. You guys remember what Barney sounds like? <laughs> I never really, uh, never really watched a lot of Barney. And neither did I. But I saw enough of it in people's houses fixing their cable that it's all their kids would watch. Oh, so yeah, there you go. Yep. See, I, I, I was always more of a Mister Rogers fan. They're, they're remaking that. Cap- Are they? Yeah. Yeah. With, uh, yeah Cap- Tom Hanks right? was all right. Yeah, they're doing a Mr. Rogers movie, I think. Tom they're Hanks. They're doing a Mr. Rogers movie with Tom Hanks. Yeah. Yep. Wow. It's just not going to be the same. Mm-hmm. I think I Tom will. Hanks will do a good job. Unless all of a yeah. sudden Tom Hanks, they come out and he's been harassing people, which, which will pretty much <laughs> ruin. <laughs> which he has. No, I think it, do, I, it would ruin so Did many people. Did Tom Hanks touch you? Not me. Oh, okay. Not me. 
Eddie, Eddie Murphy did. Touch his kneecaps. That's true. Um, That's hashtag kneecaps. Hashtag, thank you. Hashtag kneecaps. <laughs> Travis uh, hates. I'm not hating. <laughs> Everything about that kneecap is a joke. Yep. Yes, that is not. Who pays three fifty for a massage? Uh, apparently, uh, apparently, some people want a want a Barney massage. And doesn't and <laughs> if you pay <laughs> three fifty for a massage, white people, white, white people three hundred fifty dollars for a massage. I don't care if you pay that much for a massage. You have to assume someone's going to touch you inappropriately because right. that is expensive. Well, that's a, it. Can well, lead that's to why they're blowing. paying that. Yeah. They do assume that. He's the yeah. only one who doesn't assume that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's he's upset that they're assuming. Oh, he's that. upset that yes. they. Okay, they want him. Yeah, that's I thought a, he that's, did it to people and they said. were upset Everybody's that Barney just, was touching yeah. them. Gotcha. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> no, you got to sign some kind of consent paperwork. I would imagine. Yeah. I would. Yeah, I would imagine there'd have to be something. Hey, yo, Barney, you're yeah. not done yet. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Get back here, man. Come on, Barney. <laughs> said mind blowing ain't blown yet <laughs> nice uh, <laughs> put on the suit barney <laughs> that is terrible yeah that's we're what? off the air now we're gonna <laughs> i'm getting fired uh what if barney see. was wearing a gimp suit of pulp fiction dude or the machine from eight millimeter yeah just a big old zipper mask and a Leather overall thing. A bunch of leather and <laughs> yeah, spikes and whips. And... Oh, wow. That's... What see, I'm getting the visual word? <laughs> What's your safe word? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, wow. Next to what you... Well, that's, that's the bad thing is, is, you know, there are probably a lot of students in here that watched Barney when they were kids, and now we are totally oh. destroying them. Oh there, boy! There's probably six of them that are triggered, and they're in a corner right now. What's that? Nothing. What'd you say, Ed? Nothing. Okay. Ed's afraid to talk into the microphone. Yeah, <laughs> he's not used to it. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. All right. Well, I think we're about to wrap it up, Dan. Uh, hurry back. Leave well, now. It's not Leave like now. I can do yeah. anything about that. I'll get back when. Yeah, just when head on out now. To get back. You said your you're done. Wrap it up. You're trained. done. Yeah, you're done. <laughs> now, th- thanks for calling in. It's good to hear from you. Uh, get your podcast going again. Yeah, it's it's never stopped. I'll get it picked back up on a weekly basis. Maybe a little more than that, but uh, yeah, we'll get that going. All right. Uh, where where can we find you? You might as well throw out some social media stuff while you're here. I mean, of course, I'm on Facebook. I don't do a whole bunch of Twitter while I'm over here. I'll get back on that when I get back to the States, though, at DDWolf3. And then I'm on Instagram, uh, I wish I was laughing. And, of course, you can find me on the podcast, I wish I was laughing radio, on podbean.com, iTunes, or Stitcher. There you go. All right. Well, thanks for calling in again. Uh, Go get some sleep. So you, yeah, we'll so you can get your day, you know, you can get your day right tomorrow. Yeah, I'll we'll get ready. Get back on that schedule. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for calling in. We we will catch you later. We'll see you when you get home. Stay safe. See you later, buddy. Yep, stay right, safe. Guys, see you in a month or so. All right. Yep. Bye. Right now, he's going to go streaking through the desert. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And his, and his Peter nice head box. kilt. Yep. Why does this thing? This, 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 uh, this thing is. You almost went into an Arnold Schwarzenegger. Ah. (laughs) Anyway, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, The Red Podcast. In the Red. In the Red. The Red Podcast. iTunes, SoundCloud. Uh, Twitter is uh, the the, the Red underscore podcast. Follow us. Share it. Yeah, follow us. Facebook follow page. Because the only people following him right now are people on the podcast. Yeah, pretty much. And like and two <laughs> other people. I don't I'm know following. who they are. I'm following. Are, you're are following? You? Yeah. On, on Twitter? No. Follow us no. on Twitter. <laughs> oh. no, you're, he's, he means when you leave here, he's following you out <laughs> yeah. in the parking lot. <laughs> I'll see you in the yeah. parking lot. The red. Yep. <laughs> Hashtag kneecaps. Yeah. <laughs> Was it Nancy Kerrigan? <laughs> All right. Uh, Shout outs to what it, whatever else you have, any shows you have coming up. Um, I don't know. I guess we can give a shout out to uh, John Morris's fat ankles quick. and uh, fat ankles. Yep, Aaron F- F- uh, Phillips's diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
Yep. And this is a shout out coming from Lumpy. So. And, and Lumpy. <laughs> no. And follow me on Facebook, Twitter, uh, iTunes, not iTunes, um, YouTube, all of it's at Travis Charles or Travis Charles. Just if you type in my name, you'll find me. I'm, I'm the first picture that comes up on Google Images. So. All right. Just whatever you want to do. Yep. Ed, you can, you can always come up with his information at hashtag kneecaps. And I'm just then- here to send a shout out for Brad Carroll. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Carroll Entertainment.com paid me to plug him today. So, oh, are you awesome, serious? Awesome. No. Yeah. Who's Brad Carroll? Plunger guy. Yeah. 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 He's got to plug him because that's why he has a plunger to unplug it. I'll yeah. plug it, Brad Carroll. Yeah. <laughs> that is, that's just mean, Ed. Anyway, that, that, that that's <laughs> all right. <laughs> wait, wait, wait to just like the show there, yeah. Ed. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just, just like. <laughs> Oh man, that that's Ed is a deadliner. Yeah, way to go, way to go. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, on that note, I think I think we're going to call it a day. Cool deal. Uh, be sure be sure to get out to uh, Wiley's Thursday for the Valentine's Date for a cause. A lot of good comics going up. Headlined by Nate Washington. Hey, ought to be a great show. Uh, yeah, get your tickets online at www.wileyscomedy.com, and we will see you next week. <laughs>